All right, so you want to dive into something kind of crazy. We got North Korea suddenly mobilizing all these volunteers. And yeah, you're right to be a little suspicious about what's actually going on. Well, the timing of these photos they released, that's what's got me puzzled. Like, why now? You know, things are already tense as it is. Yeah, it does feel very deliberate, doesn't it? Especially with the whole thing about their troops turning up in Ukraine, like they're trying to send a message, uh-huh. you know. So what kind of message are we even talking about here? It's defiance for sure, but it's also them trying to muddy the waters a bit. Our source, who is actually pretty critical of the CCP, by the way, sees this as their playbook. You mean like when China sent in troops during the Korean War but called them volunteers? Bingo. And this time, it could be them setting the stage to send North Korean forces to help Russia. Heck, maybe even an excuse for China to get more directly involved on the Korean Peninsula. And this source sees Kim Jong-un pulling from the same playbook as Xi Jinping. 100%. They see a lot of similarities in how both regimes use propaganda and what our source calls information warfare. Hold on. Information warfare? That sounds kind of scary. What does that even mean? Think of it like this. It's about controlling the narrative. Not just through lies, but by mixing in just enough truth to make the lies stick. So you're saying these photos, even if they're staged, they could be part of some bigger plan to mess with how the world sees them. You got it. And the source uses a really interesting analogy for this. They call it the 9.1 rule. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. What's the 9.1 rule? Basically, they say that straight up lies, 100% lies, those are easy to disprove. But mix in a little truth, that's how you get people doubting everything. So even little details that seem unimportant, they could be part of a bigger strategy. That's like a little wild when you think about it. And this is something that you're saying Xi Jinping does too. Absolutely. Our source actually points to a recent appearance of Xi Jinping that seems deliberately misleading. There are things in the background, like a banner about plateau rocket forces that don't match up with where he actually was. That wasn't an accident. That was them trying to mislead people on purpose. Wow. So it's all about creating a narrative, even if you have to bend the truth or just flat out lie. Exactly. And the source says that this is the new battleground where information itself is the weapon. Which brings us right back to those North Korean volunteers. Right. It's not really about the actual numbers. It's about the message they want to send. Nailed it. It's about looking tough and in control, even if it's all for show. So what's the point of all this posturing? Besides freaking people out, I mean. It creates uncertainty. Nobody knows what they'll do next. Think about it. If even the experts can't tell what's real and what's not, how can anyone make good decisions? How can they counter these tactics? And that's the whole point of this information warfare, to keep everyone guessing. Exactly. It's about sowing doubt even among people who should know better. And it plays on something very human. We tend to believe information that already fits with what we think we know. That's kind of terrifying and brilliant at the same time. But if this is North Korea and China working together, what's the end game here? What are they trying to accomplish? That's the million dollar question, right? It's not just about will they or won't they start a war. It's about what it could look like, you know, and what these guys actually want. Which is a lot harder to figure out than a simple yes or no, right? You're telling me. And honestly, this has been bugging experts for ages. Those old rules, deterrence, the balance of power, all that, they're being thrown out the window. Our source mentioned that too, how escalation is the strategy now, not de-escalation. That's a little unsettling now. It is. And we're seeing it play out everywhere. Think about North Korea and everything else that's going on. The war in Ukraine, the Middle East, China throwing its weight around in the South China Sea. It's all about pushing the limits, seeing what they can get away with. So you're saying these things that seem kind of isolated, like this whole photo op in North Korea, they're all connected to this bigger picture of global instability. That's exactly what our source is saying. And this information war, it's a huge part of that. It's about creating chaos, making it harder for other countries to even react. And that circles back to how threats like nuclear war, they don't seem to be working the way they used to. Exactly. If nobody knows what the other side will do, if you can't tell what's real, it's impossible to deter anything. The old rules just don't apply anymore. So what are the new rules? That's what we're all trying to figure out. But one thing's for sure. Information is a weapon now, and those who control it well, they hold all the cards. Which is why this whole thing, this deep dive, is so important. We have to be smarter about how information is being used against us, how it shapes the way we see the world. A hundred percent. It's about asking the tough questions, looking beyond the surface, and trying to understand what's really motivating all of this. So going back to those volunteer photos, Mm -hmm. what about the timing? Why release them now? 
people don't forget, North Korea is great at propaganda. They know how to use images to look strong and unified, and they know how to take advantage of global tension. So they're sending a message, but who are they sending it to? It's a message with a few different audiences, actually. Their own people, the international community, and anyone who might want to challenge them. So three different audiences. Their people, the world, and their rivals. But what are they trying to say with these pictures? What's the message? Well, for their own citizens, it's about showing strength. It's a reminder that there are always enemies out there, which justifies their government's control. And what about the rest of us? What message are they sending to the international community? It's basically them saying, don't underestimate us. You know, we'll fight back, even if it means things escalate. And for their rivals, well, it's a reminder that they have a military and they're not afraid to use it. It's just constant, isn't it? Every time you turn around, there's a new crisis, a new threat, some new information war going on. It's overwhelming. I know what you mean. It really can feel that way. And that's exactly why it's so important to really pay attention to the information we're taking in and the stories we're choosing to believe. Easier said than done, right? <laughs> Especially with how good these disinformation campaigns have gotten. You're not wrong. It takes effort. But remember that 9.1 rule we talked about? No. Just because something sounds believable, just because it's presented in a way that makes sense doesn't mean it's true. We got to look a little deeper, question our own assumptions, and try to see things from different angles. So we need to be more critical of the information that's thrown at us. Exactly. And that means being aware of our own biases. We all have them. We want to believe things that already make sense to us, even if they're not completely true. It's like we almost have to train ourselves to be more skeptical. Yeah. Especially when something fits too perfectly with what we already believe. You got it. And it's not just about being skeptical of information from sources we disagree with. It's about questioning everything, even and maybe especially information that seems to support what we already think. Because the truth is usually a lot more complicated than any one story can tell, right? Exactly. There are always different sides, different perspectives. And in a world that's drowning in information, it's the ability to see those nuances, to separate what's real from what's fake, that's going to define how we understand the world. So where do we even start? How do we become more critical thinkers in a world that seems like it's designed to manipulate us? Start by asking the right questions. Who benefits from this? What are they trying to make me believe and why? So maybe it all comes down to admitting that we don't have all the answers. The world's a messy, complicated place, and the only way to make sense of it is to stay curious, stay informed, and never stop asking those questions. Absolutely. Keep digging for the truth and you'll be all right. And on that note, we'll leave you with this. If information is the new battlefield, what weapons do you need to arm yourself to survive? Think about that. Until next time, keep searching for the truth and keep diving deep.